This lesson is pretty similar to the previous one. First of all, we'll have to take care of both screens, and then we want one loop as a background, and then one picture in picture that appears on the left screen and then moves onto the right screen and disappears or fades out. Let's pick one of our test patterns, dump it onto layer one, get the opacity up to see both screens. And once we have done that, let's take care of the camera setup. We can select every camera individually, but in a setup like this one, we can also select both cameras. We go to the control tab and at the bottom of our software interface to the right, you will find the align command. Clicking three times, the arrows will look at each other, so to speak. If you now change the X offset, both of the two cameras parameters will be affected so that the cameras will move towards one another in this case. It's quite easy to see that in the preview window. Let us save all of that to the timeline. Now let's pick up the camera settings and make them longer so that we can start with the actual programming. A loop for the background. We'll choose layer one once more. Take care of the X scaling across the two backgrounds. Once we've taken care of the scaling, we'll save it all to the timeline. Now we change the clip back to free run mode so that the clip can run continuously. And we'll go to layer two and we'll now create a clip that is supposed to appear with a two second fade in and that should then move over to the right screen where it's supposed to disappear again. So we put the loop onto layer two, fade up the opacity, play loop, scale it, move it to the position where it's supposed to appear. And once we've found the right position, we'll set the opacity back to zero, and then we'll save it all to the timeline now we will add another two seconds followed by fading up the opacity again now we'll activate the x position value because we want the position to remain stable until now we'll save it all to the timeline once more now we'll add another five seconds that's how long it should take for the clip to fly over to the right screen. We'll now change the X position until we reach a spot where the clip is supposed to stop. We should keep the same opacity level until then, which is where we'll save the active opacity value to the timeline. Store active. And now we'll go another two seconds further along the timeline to reach the fade out, which means setting the opacity back to zero. Right click, store active, and now we're in the comfortable position of being able to watch the whole thing. The clip fades in, moves to the other screen, and fades out again.